just how bad is it for your members at the moment? Well, clearly at the moment, if we just crashed out with no deal, it would be disastrous for many small businesses for the simple reason they don't have the resource to plan for something that they don't know what they're having to plan for. Um, and you only have to take this into the context of where we are at the moment with the domestic issues. You have confidence at the lowest it's been for a considerable amount of time with the fourth quarter index from FSB very sh clearly showing it in negative territory again. You have got cost increases, and at the moment, business just doesn't know what it's got to plan for. So how can it plan? When you say that they don't know what to plan for, surely there can't be a business up there anywhere in the United Kingdom right now that doesn't actively consider no deal to be a very real possibility. Certainly a lot more, uh, a lot more of a realistic outcome than it was six months ago. Indeed, but if you look back at March, many businesses who were able to plan, that was about one in seven, spent a lot of money, a lot of time, either in inventory or in uh, establishing offices overseas in Brussels, in Amsterdam or in Dublin. And of course that never actually materialised. What we don't want is to go through the same scenario again at the end of October and again have a delay on that. We need to know what we've got to plan for. We need to be able to put contingency plans in place if we have to. And we need to just get on with this. And, and, and presumably part of that would be some form of financial assistance coming from government. At least on that, you are hearing from both the candidates that could be the next Prime Minister that there will be money available to organisations and small businesses. Well, we certainly hope there's something available, but until we know what is actually going to happen, you can't even say that you need money to be available. Business just wants to know what it has to do. And if it is a no-deal scenario, we need government to actually make sure that it is ready itself and to be able to inform business what it has to do to comply, whether it be tariffs, whether it be customs clearance or other issues. So has there been anything that's grabbed you? I mean, obviously, you will have been paying close attention, as indeed will your members, uh, to the hustings and the debates and the uh, newspaper articles about the next Conservative leader. I mean, of the two, who do you prefer? No, we don't choose sides. Uh, I think one of the crucial things that people have to remember is that our membership was absolutely split, no different to the general population, mm. almost straight down the middle. So we've been concentrating very much on uh, as free and open access to trade with the European Union as much as possible. We need the right people with the right skills. And, of course, we then need to expand for those businesses that are looking to do overseas trade particularly with the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, China and other emerging um, but even within, But even within um, the, the FSB itself, there is a, a sizable chunk, not quite half, but a sizable chunk of your membership that is remarkably sanguine about no deal, isn't it? There is, but that applies on both sides. So we've been very, very focused indeed through repeated surveys of our membership on what it is that the businesses need to do what they want to do to ensure that whether it be a service sector business being able to get their people across into other countries as freely as possible whether it be trade and even if you had some increases in tariffs that would prove hugely detrimental to many many businesses who are trading with the eu okay so what happens then what happens on november the first to you know the organizations that you represent if we leave without you well it was interesting only the other week i was uh, over in northern ireland and you had the example there that a business that currently have all its labels ready to trade within the eu if there was a crash out on the 1st of November, all of that labelling, all of that produce in stock would actually have to be changed if they wanted to deal with the EU and separately within the UK. And that is a massive thing for any small business to have to try and contend with. It's often said, and I just want you to provide a bit of context here, that small businesses are the backbone of the British economy. <clears throat> I mean, how true is that today? That is very, very true indeed, because if you look at how many are actually uh, engaged within a supply chain of one type or another, it's around about 70%. So even though you've only got perhaps 20% exporting, uh, it is a considerable number that are likely to be affected were there to be a crash out with no deal. So we're very, very focused on Parliament coming together, making sure that we have a transition period and making sure that we have a deal so that there's only one change that businesses have to contend with.
I come back to the point that I made at the beginning. There cannot be a businessman in this country that has, does not recognise that no deal is a very is a reality now. That it is an outcome that could well come uh, come to fruition. On top of that, the, you know the statistic that we talked about previously. You know, just less than half of your members, you know, kind of quite happy with no deal. I mean, who hasn't been preparing for no deal? But let's just come back to the point that I made earlier. End of March, we had the possibility of no deal. End of October, we have the reality of a possibility again of no deal. But it's the domestic issues that our members are much more focused on at the moment. Increases in costs. You've got six year, year on year cost increases on national living wage for those sectors that are having to pay those sorts of wages. You have auto enrolment increasing. You have business rates, which is not just on retail. All of these are coming at a perfect time to create that storm that business is being faced with. And it's the domestic issues that are of more concern even now as we approach new government, new prime minister, possibility of crashing out at the end of October. Yeah, it's always a bumpy time anyway, isn't it? Uh, Mike Cherry.